Today, the Father declares, My Spirit is the one who resides in you, and it is the fullness of deity. You can count on me to never abandon or abandon you. In the event that I were to depart from you, I would be forced to depart from myself, as I reside in your hearts via trust that is both whole and truthful. Should I decide to leave you, I would be required to serve myself with a notice of eviction, which is something I will not agree to do. You are the spot that I have decided to call home, my dear. There is no other place on earth where I would rather be than completely residing in all of my magnificence on the inside of you more than anywhere else. I dwell within you as the resurrection of your body. Are you aware of the fact that you will rise, not because of what is above you but rather because of what is within you, in your very bones? There is no way that I will ever allow death to hold you, for if I did, would no longer be the God of life. I will never allow death to hold upon you. In contrast to the gods of the dead, I am the God of those who are still alive. Get a new lease on life today. You are the recipient of the scepter that represents the righteousness that I have sacrificed for in your life. Yes, you are clean. You have been included. Opportunities are waiting for you to take advantage of them. Communicate with the mountain and urge it to be removed from the area. Make a concerted effort to pray against every circumstance or circumstance that is antithetical to my promise in your life. You are the recipient of freedom. In my kingdom, liberty serves as your foundational state. You should never give up to the invasion of demonic or human forces against you. You should never give in to the situation. Always remember to keep your focus on my promise and to place your expectations in me. It is no longer the case that your history governs your future. You are the recipient of the promise, and the day star is being manifest in your heart on this day in order to bring you out into the place where you are blessed. According to what the Father has revealed to us today, all things have become new and the old things have been destroyed. On the cross, I have dissolved in myself every curse and every imposition of hell that was made against your life. Your veins are filled with the life that comes from the resurrection, just as I have been risen to a completely new life. What is the absence of illness and disease? This is not included. Where are the areas of failure and incapacity? By virtue of my power, it is lifted. When will death come? You are no longer able to be struck by it since it has lost all of its sting. To me, you belong. Now I am yours. With the beginning of the love relationship. Today, you have been bestowed with a new favor. In the cherished, you are accepted as you are. Within the confines of my dominion, you are entitled to the status of favored son and favored daughter. This day, the Father encourages you to have perseverance. Taking courage and comfort from my word is not a vain or naive thing to do. It takes bravery and comfort from me. It is the world's goal for you to feel disheartened and angry as a result of the events that are taking on around you. What the Holy Spirit does not produce is anger. It is impossible to find any kind of wisdom in a frowning face. Allow yourself to be filled with the peace and joy that is my kingdom, and allow it to flow up inside of you. God tells us to laugh with the laughter of faith. This is the derisiveness of the joy of God that causes all of the strongholds of the enemy to be crushed down to dust and splinters in a moment of time. Say, ba, ha, ha, because this is the joy of God. I am with you, declares God, and he promises that he will never abandon or leave you. Your father tells you that this is your safety and this is your comfort in the middle of a generation that is corrupt and twisted. Today, the Father instructs us to focus our passion on things that are higher. Despite your origins in the domain of dust, 
you are more than just a creature. It is in the domain of dust that the serpent is able to nourish itself. There is nothing for you to find in the land of dust, and there is no nourishment for your spirit that can be found there, declares God. This day, I have provided you with the secret manna that can only be found in the glory that I have for you. Put aside the dry husks of the swine's flesh diet, which only provides a momentary sense of satisfaction and then causes you to feel burdened down with feelings of shame and grief. You are not merely a physical being by any means. For the sake of transforming you into a creature of spirit and life, I took on the form of flesh and blood. That you may get my life now. I say to you, drink of my life, which is being lavishly poured out to you on this earthly day. At this very moment, Michael, the great prince, is the one who is standing up among my people. Angel warriors and angel reapers have been sent into your life to litigate in your defense and to militate in your favor, despite the fact that the entire world is against you. God tells us to rejoice because your name has been declared from the book of life that belongs to the Lamb, and as a result, change is on the way here and now. I am encouraging you to welcome the change that I am bringing about. Accept the fact that you are an eternal creature who is currently residing in a finite existence in order to serve as a model of grace and life and to triumph over every challenge that is thrown in your path through the power of my strength. In the same way that I am from above, you are also from above since I have taken you into my own possession. You are not only a human being. You are a new creature because I brought an end, a finality, to the Adamic race by the crucifixion, and through the new birth I have brought you to myself and raised you up as God-men and God-women in the earth. This is why you are a new creation. This is something that your Father encourages you to embrace and show in every thought, word, and action that you have as you go about your day now today. The Father claims that even though heaven and earth will be destroyed, my love for you will never be decreased or taken away from you. This is what the Father says today. According to God, I have bestowed my affection upon you on this very day. In spite of the fact that other people look down on you and that you sometimes even look down on yourself, my heart does not feel that way toward you at any time. It is because I love you that I adore you. It is a simple case of mistaken identification when you are influenced by the disdain of others or when you are influenced by your own feelings of hatred against yourself. As far as I am concerned, the things that you do or do not do do not determine who you are. Your obligation to appear before my throne is unaffected by either the activities you take or the inactions you choose to take. My presence in your life is a direct result of the person that Jesus is and the work that Christ accomplished on the cross. This is the essence of righteous behavior. It is not dependent on money, rather, it is grace through faith that provides you with the ability to stand upright before me without feeling shame or guilt. In the words of the Father, raise your head. Be the gate that never closes, which raises its head in acknowledgement and reverence when I am in the presence of you. In the cherished, you are accepted as you are. You are not in danger. When you are in my pavilion, wrapped in my embrace, you are safe and sound. You are not supposed to go through life with the Damocles sort of religious condemnation hanging over your head, threatening your impending ruin. This is not the way that the Christian life is supposed to be lived. The Father tells you, I love you. Because I am standing in the position of eternity, I am bringing my love to bear on your existence within the confines of time and space, which are both limited. What is the matter with sin? We have forgiven you. What about the deficiencies? The fire is extinguished by my powerful grace, which transforms you and leads you to be lifted up to walk in a newness of life. The time for striving has come to an end. 
Because you are the recipient of all of heaven's riches through the importation of my limitless love and favor, it is no longer required for you to earn the favor of the spiritual realm. Today, God instructs you to declare, not my will, but thine be done. In your deepest, most private thoughts, my desire is to bring glory to myself by you. My desire is for you to be adorned on the inside through the manifestation of my spirit and the manifestation of my power. This day, God says, you are to receive the blessings that heaven has to offer. In order for you to manifest myself in you and, as a result, manifest who I ordained you to be, I will give you the gifts of healing, tongues, miracles, discernment, and the fullness of all that fills all in all. You do not count as a failure. The affliction is not placed upon you. Some people have cursed you, but I have blessed you. There have been others who have cursed you. In spite of the fact that there have been some who have mocked you in your hope, God says that I have not mocked you. It is not that I have made fun of you, rather, I have sent the only begotten into the world to make the fulfillment of your greatest heart's desire and your greatest dream a reality in your life. There is no deficiency, declares God. Since I am not lacking, it follows that you are not lacking either. If I make a promise to you, are you going to believe the bank balance of the financial institutions that man has created or the bank balance of heaven that has been accumulated for you? Pay attention to what I have to say, says God, for I am a blank check God, and the vaults of heaven are standing open so that you might withdraw by faith whatever that you require. That is not what you have been taught by other people, but you have to decide for yourself whether you believe the straightforward testimony of my word or the intricate theories and formulae of unbelief that man uses to make my message of no consequence. In me, you will find stability. Allow this mind to be in you that was in me, the Christ mind that enabled me to triumph over the evil one, and that is enabling you to discover the empowerment from on high that will change the circumstance that you are fighting with. According to what Jesus says today, your testimony should be, I go to the Father. You will be with me during the countless ions of future time, and you were with me in the eternities before the foundation of the earth. This is something to keep in mind whenever you find yourself inclined to wonder where your life is going. I am with you now, sitting in high realms far above all principalities and powers in every name that is named. If you are able to receive it, you are with me. You are not a creature that is constrained by either time or sensation. The thing that originates in time or that dictates what will be based on your five senses should not be allowed to take precedence. For the same reason that I questioned Adam 6,000 years ago, I am now asking you the same question, who told you that you were naked? I want to tell you that you are not naked, rather, you are clothed upon of my glory and my spirit, which is putting you over in every aspect of your life. This is the song of heaven that emancipates you and sets you more entirely free than the human voice can tell you. Let the declaration be heard and echo on the inside of you. You are being surrounded by the singing of the Lamb on this particular day. Are you able to hear that wonderful refrain that reverberates in you and through you, and that, by virtue of its force and resonance, eliminates all imprisonment, every falsehood of hell? and any and all despair or hatred that might possibly presume to touch your life. God encourages you to take a stand in that song today. Instead of listening to the cacophony of discordance that starts with the limited strength of the adversary, you should get up and attenuate your spiritual ear to my sound. God declares that my song, the song of the I Am, is resonating within you and through you in order to liberate, to heal, to set you free and emancipate you, and to bring you into your blessing place today. You are more than flesh and blood, which is what the Father says to you today. As a person, you are more than the sum of your parts or the combination of the experiences you have had throughout your life. 
Refuse to allow yourself to be defined by the opinions of others or by natural phenomena. My kingdom is one in which I have decreed that you will be known in the same way that you are known. I have decreed that something of my timelessness, boundlessness, and limitless potential will be manifested in you. I have ordained this. It is important that the phrase, all things are possible, only believe, be heard coming from the echo chamber of your inner self. Sin will not be able to trap you. You are not going to be defined by boundaries. Considering that I am, you are. You are a child of God. You are complete in every way. You are revitalized on a daily basis. Therefore, go out into the world and live out my nature in front of other people. It is not the case that I am not demonstrating my truth and reality in your life simply because the others around you do not get it. You have found your solace and your security, not in things that are external to you, but in me. What you believe to be lost is now recovered because you have discovered it. It is acceptable. Have faith in it. You should be aware that the money has already been paid, and all that is left for you to do is to rest your head on my shoulder and enter into the rest that I have planned for you from the beginning of time. According to the Father, angels are guarding you at this very moment. You are being surrounded by angels who are trying to get a glimpse of my majesty. The messengers that I refer to as angelos are currently present in your life. The angels that are allocated to your life are drawn, not to your humanity, but to my glory that is within you. Just as the angels that are standing before my throne shout holy, 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 so do the angels that are assigned to your life. When you open your eyes, you will see that there are more heavenly allies standing up for you in this predicament than there are imps of hell that are ranging about you to resist my inexorable will. You are aware of the consequences that come with the fact that I am who I am on the inside of you, right? The Father expresses that I am present within you, and that my will will not be disregarded. In spite of this, because I shall not be rejected, you will not be denied any of your requests. Rather of attempting to artificially inflate your human confidence, it is necessary to pray in the same manner that I prayed in Gethsemane, not my will but thine be done. It is not necessary for you to be afraid to pray that prayer, says God. You must realize that I take great pleasure in seeing the success of my saints, right? Are you a holy person? You are, without a doubt. It is not your own level of religiosity or lack thereof that determines your status as one of my holy ones, rather, it is who I am on the inside of you at this very moment. In order to alleviate all suffering, I took on all of the misery that was there. It is as certain that I will take up home in you as it is that I will sit on the throne in any heaven. Will Satan be able to invade my throne whenever he pleases? Then what gives you the right to believe that he has any authority to interfere with your life? Open your eyes and see the world. I want you to see the angels of heaven coming down and coming up upon the Son of Man that I am on the inside of you. The glory that I have hid in your heart is known and expressed as Christ in you, the hope of glory. They are constantly pushing into the glory, not only the glory that is before my throne but also the glory that I have found in your heart. Having faith in that reality and that promise, you are able to relax with anticipation, looking forward to the future that I am presenting to you even at this very moment. Today, the Father says, I am watching over you, I am directing you, and I am doing all of these things for you. The natural mind and the natural man that are a part of you have the tendency to believe that they are well informed, but in reality, they are rather ignorant. It is my offer to you to ascend to a higher level. Approach the higher mind, which is the mind of Christ, and ascend into it. 
The sacrifice of blood was made so that you may be provided with the resources necessary to establish yourself as a king and a priest on the earth. This was the price that was paid. Is it not clear to you that the beginning of your reign and rule has arrived? On a calendar, there is no cosmic date on which you will suddenly know everything, be everything, and quickly come to the full grandeur of the sun's maturity. There is no such thing. For now, I am cultivating you. If you are willing to cooperate with what I am teaching and educating you right now, you will have the opportunity to experience heaven on earth to the fullest extent that life can offer on this side of eternity. Would you like to wait for some day, or only one day? It is possible for you to be where I am right now because I have prepared a spot for you. To what extent are you prepared to go into my now and to take a step into the now that I have bestowed upon you in this life? You have not always been instructed in this manner, but you must make a choice between listening to the advice of those who are not well informed and ascending into the mentality of the Christ mind, which will enlighten and instruct you in everything that I have made available to you as a result of the sacrifice of the blood at Calvary. Say to yourself, I will take mine now. In your heart. You must make the decision today, and from this day forward, that you will walk into what other people are only waiting for. Here and now, God is saying, press into the press. You should not accept no as an answer. My yes and amen is on the other side of the thing that is preventing you from experiencing the miracle that you have been praying for. The time has come for you to make a significant shift in the way you tackle the difficulties that are preventing you from reaching your blessing spot. The actions that you are taking are the reason why things are the way that they are. In order to achieve a different outcome, you will need to take a different approach. You should be willing to think and behave differently than you have in the past, especially when it comes to situations. It is only at that point that you will have the opportunity to have hope of witnessing a different outcome, one that is qualified by my promise and my power acting in response to the radical acts of faith that you have performed. There are things that you have been waiting on me to perform, but as long as you do not take action, they will never come to pass. Observation is not a prerequisite for entering my domain. A simple passive acceptance of the situation will only result in a subsequent increase in the level of captivity. I have completed everything that I was going to undertake in regard to your predicament. Aside from the work that was done on the cross, what else is required? It is a case of complete and utter unbelief to believe that there is something that must take place after Calvary. Declare something to yourself that, it is finished. You will experience a miracle if you put your faith in the finished work of Calvary and start taking steps of faith that are concrete, substantial, and clearly defined at the moment in your life where you are in the most need. I want you to understand where you are in my eyes, God says today. You are aware of how people around you perceive you, as well as how those who are directly connected to you perceive you. God says, I see you and I regard you, and I want you to realize and adapt your sense of self-referential to how I see you and how I regard you. Right now is the hour and the moment that I would like for you to throw off the grave clothes of men's ideas that have encircled and held you captive. From now on, you should never, ever, ever allow yourself to be defined by the thoughts or feelings of other people from the point of view of your sense of knowledge. According to the Father, you will no longer be held captive by the fear of man and the opinions of men from this day forward. I made you a creature of dominance when I created you. As Adam in the garden, I have given you the responsibility of subduing the earth that you are currently in and producing fruit that is beyond anyone's wildest imagination. You are exactly like this. I continue to refer to you in this manner as a tender and a custodian of the scenario that you move around in on a daily basis. When I look at you, says the Father, I look at you as though you were a king, 
because in reality, you are a king and a priest who is called to tread my courts, the father adds. You are not going to be a person who is lorded over by anyone or anything because I have prescribed that you will have dominion. I have bestowed upon you a territory, and I have decreed that within that administration and prefecture, you will be responsible for upholding the rule and maintaining the peace of my realm. I am calling you now to begin exercising that dominance as if you genuinely believed it, regardless of whether or not you feel it in the natural world. In the same way that I sit enthroned in your heart by faith, so you sit enthroned in the earth as my regent and as my heir, therefore, take authority and put down every insurgency of the enemy against my blessing in your life and in the lives of those around you. I have not called you to natural things, but rather to spiritual realities and in the spirit. I command you to stand up and take your place, says God. It is certain that you will witness the shift that will put you over in life and land you right in the middle of your manifest destiny if you stand forward in the bravery of someone who understands who I am on the inside of you. In this day and age, God declares, I have ordained you to be with you. Despite the fact that I have called you to do something, there are a lot of things that are pulling on you that have nothing to do with it. Your first and most important call is to locate a place where you may have a close relationship with me. Until you come to me in the hidden spot, you will never be able to discover my secret. I have some verities and truths that I would want to share with you, but they are not intended for public consumption or distribution to anybody else than yourself. Nevertheless, from that position of holy disclosure, I will empower you and unleash the anointing of heaven inside you, which will have an impact on a great number of people's lives. Are you willing to let go of the expectations of the external life in order to discover the reality that lies within me? Today is a wonderful opportunity for you to take a step forward. You should not have a spiritual experience that is two miles wide and only a half inch deep. I do not want that to happen to you. I invite you to join me in the depths. Take a back seat to my still, small voice that is luring you deeper into the things of my spirit. Let the demands of natural things take a back seat to my voice. On this day, I will break the tyranny of the urgent over your life so that you can concentrate on the things that are truly essential. Things that are natural can wait. It is possible to not respond to emails or SMS. The social media platforms will be waiting for you the following day. Neither the eye nor the ear can ever be completely filled with sight, yet I have summoned you to be by my side on this particular day. Even though the things that will happen in the future will take care of themselves, I have called you to come away with me and sit at my feet, just like Mary did, in order to learn about me. On the next day, there will be time to act as of Martha. Reject the authority that men's opinions hold, which is not valid. Instead of relaxing down and tucking yourself into my embrace and allowing the trivialities of life to fade away in the resonating grandeur of my presence that is now upon you, leave aside the spirit of man-pleasing that is constantly moving from problem to problem, seeking to live up to the expectations of another person. Beloved, it is time for you to mature and become who I am. Within the context of my kingdom, maturity is never found outside of the atmosphere of closeness that I encourage you to discover within me and to make your priority today.